And great to have you back once again. Let's go back in history to the year 1979. And we're talking about something that has to do with the uh, Hollywood Walk of... Uh, um, um, Hollywood... Uh, what is it? Walk of Fame? I wonder why they gave it that name. Anyway, um, if you want to have a star in Hollywood, it takes a lot of years of, you know, putting in your, you know, skills and talent and, and you know, dedication. Yeah, a lot of people have, you know, been in the industry for many, many years and still don't have their star in the Hollywood Walk. But there's a guy called Jay Silverhills, who in 1979, um, a Mohawk actor, became the first Native American to have a star commemorated in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He was an indigenous Canadian actor and an athlete, and was well known for his role as Tonto. If you, if you, anyone of you saw the movie Lone Ranger, um, he was Tonto in the Lone Ranger. He has a star on the Walk of Fame at 6538 Hollywood Boulevard. Um, and, um, you know, he was, you know, like I said, the very first. The uh, uh, Americans, first of all, in the arts, honored Silver Hills with their Life Achievement Award. Yeah, just before this uh, star was given to him. He excelled in athletics, most notably in lacrosse, and of course, before leaving home to travel around North America. Silver Hills was one of, among the first players uh, chosen to play for the Toronto uh, Tecumseh, Tecumse, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, he also suffered a stroke in 1976 and was cremated at Chapel of the Pines Crematory, and his, also, his ashes were returned to the Six Nations Reserve in Ontario, Canada. But in 1979, um, after, of course, uh, he had had a stroke, he was the first Native American, indigenous Canadian actor, of course, uh, who got his uh, star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mm, interesting. Jay Silverheels. I really love it when we talk about first, people who just blaze trails and show people that, you know, this is possible. Sad that this happened about two years after he passed, right? Uh, about three years. About three years after he passed. So, so sad. When I read stories in history about people fighting for something or working hard, you know, recently I've been going on a literary journey exploring African women in history who fought passionately for their countries and for freedom and all of that. And it's so sad that I saw the similar thread of them fighting for something and then dying before that thing came to pass. Talking about queens in Mozambique, in Angola, Queen in Zinga, Ana de Sosa. Things, these things were important in schools. But, you know, also re um, relating to Jay Silverhills, he's worked so hard, he's done amazing things in his country, representing and then he was celebrated after he passed. Reminds me of a song by Pat Rankin. It's recently released, talking about how people need to be celebrated while they're alive and not, you know, when they're passed and then you go and say, oh, he was, he was fantastic, he was this, or when you, when you don't have them anymore. So yes, we need oh, well. to celebrate people while they are alive. Oh, well, um, when your time is up, your time is up. You know, whenever, event, whenever you get that uh, star, you know, Hollywood Walk of Fame, or, you know, uh, get the celebration, um, you know, it, it's life, you know, and it's, it's a human nature. You know, there's people who currently, you know, who are still alive and already still have their stars um, on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, so I think his case is just one of those. No, I'm talking about the star now, like just generally appreciating yeah. people in your life. Yeah, I'm sure that he, I'm, well, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't there in 79, you know, but I'm sure that he definitely was uh, celebrated. There are some of the movies that he was in that are still, you know, classic still today, yeah. so... Um, rest in peace to Jay Silver Hills. Interesting. All right. So I'm going back to the year 2012. It's just a recent history, July the 21st, 2012. And in this day in history, um, a Turkish American explorer, adventurer, his name is Eden Erich. He was the first man to circumnavigate the globe solo by using human power. The story of Eden Erich is very interesting because. He circumnavigated the world by rowing, by kayaking, by hiking, by cycling from pier to pier in Bodega Bay, California, USA. This is journey of circumnavigating the globe lasted five years, 11 days, 12 hours, and 22 minutes. He began this journey in the year 2007, 10th of July, 2007, and he ended on the 21st of July, 2012. He cycled um, cycled across three continents, North America, Australia, and Africa. He rode three oceans, the Pacific, the Indian, and the Atlantic Ocean. And it's just amazing, you know, listening to him, you know, when he just talked about his experience, saying, you know, the challenge for him was basically keeping his mind in check, being mentally fit, 
because it wasn't easy. Do you know what it means to circumnavigate the globe and to just row across oceans? You're seeing no one just rowing. And he, had to, he, he won um, the Guinness World Record for this, the first human-powered circumnavigation. Just yeah. amazing. People breaking barriers and challenging themselves to do things. Absolutely. Um, well, in societies where you know they, they, they are not dealing with problems like hunger, um, you know, you would find these, People but but also the US, for me, for me also, the, you know, th this is also um, you know a picture of, for me of uh, truly living uh, your life, yes, you know, and and being able to chase you know, your dreams that, actually, yeah, you know, and but but also realizing that life doesn't exist in just one city or in one place, you True. Know, it exists in many other places. I'm not sure what countries he he, he passed through in uh, Africa. But, um, you know, I'm sure also that it probably was his first time in many of these continents mm -hmm. and he was able to go all, you know, all the way. It took him five years, but he was able to achieve it. And that for me is truly living um, and uh, traveling and experiencing different cultures, experiencing different um, uh, climates, experiencing different people, you know, entirely from yes. what, what you're used to. There are people who have never left the city that they were born, you know, and they're, you know, more than 40, 50 years. They're still in that same place. Um, so, well, congratulations to him. Um, I, I also... You know, I've heard of a particular lady who tried something similar um, and didn't make it back. Uh, she, she's, she's uh, on record one of those planes. When we, when we heard about the MH370 uh, that disappeared, um, so there's a time that I did a little reading on planes that have disappeared and never been, you know, heard of again. I think there's a particular woman who tried to do the same circumnavigation across the world and just never came back. You know, plane was never found. Um, she's, you know, gone basically, and that, that's a long time ago. Uh, but he was successful, and so congratulations to him. And uh, let's let's see what more we can achieve. Mm. Absolutely. We'll take a break here and return to discuss our first big story. All the papers are talking about it. It's about Sondu Boho. What exactly, you know, is the reality, you know, the facts behind that arrest? The same for Nambikano. People are still asking. The government of the UK is still asking what are the facts. So, you know, questions really and that we need to get answers to. Uh, join us for that conversation after this break.